Hey Impact, Joe Musso coming at you here with video number five of our newly determined seven part series on the five things we talked about at winter camp. And today we're focusing on number four again, which is loving God more than our own comforts or lives. Now, after last week, I felt like I left you with this unanswered question of how do I love God more? Well, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your perspective, the answer to that question is we don't because any affection that we might have towards God has to start with the Holy Spirit revealing him to us. In other words, there's nothing we can do in and of ourselves to do that. And again, depending on your perspective, freeing or frustrating as that may be, the bottom line is, is I cannot try hard enough to love God. I have to allow the Holy Spirit to work through me. And we start this off with a passage we looked at at winter camp, which is in 2 Corinthians 3. It was there we read, but their minds were hardened, for to this day when they read the Old Covenant, that same veil remains unlifted, because only through Christ is it taken away. First, as we talked about at Winter Camp, unless Christ removes the veil, or the Father draws us, or the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth, we can't even know God, let alone love Him. So it has to start with a divine revelation from the Holy Spirit of who God is. Second of all, this passage, 2 Corinthians 3, along with so many others like Ephesians 1, show the intentionality of God, that He actually chose us. And no better verse says that than John 15. It's there that Christ says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. When we realize that because of our sinful nature that there is nothing in us that would make us choose God and because of that sinful nature that we are enemies of God and even though that was the state of our heart and our soul, Christ still chose us to have relationship with him and to give us the opportunity to enjoy him. For me personally, that was the moment when I realized that, that the gratitude that I felt ignited my affection for God and that gratitude began to give birth to a desire to be obedient and turned into a love for God. So again, it all starts with the work of the Holy Spirit revealing who Christ is and what he did for us and removing that veil from our hearts. Now, here is where our free will comes into play and here is where we can begin to nurture our affection towards God. The first thing we can do is practice obedience. If scripture is clear about one thing, it is this, that you will never have the blessing of God nor the indwelling presence of God in your life, that joy sustaining presence of God in your life unless you are obedient. Second, we can read the word. This is one of the main ways we can cultivate our joy and our affection for God. In fact, you might remember when we were at winter camp, we studied George Mueller and this is what he said. But in what way shall we attain to this settled happiness of soul? How shall we learn to enjoy God? How do we obtain such an all-sufficient, soul-satisfying portion in Him as shall enable us to let go the things of this world as vain and worthless in comparison? I answer, this happiness is to be obtained through the study of the Holy Scriptures. God has therein revealed Himself unto us in the face of Jesus Christ. Being in the Word and meditating on it produces incredible fruit in our lives and one of those fruits is the all-sufficient, soul-satisfying joy that Mueller talked about. And not only that, you cannot be obedient unless you are studying and meditating on God's Word. Third, we need to be in communion with God. Yes, this is the cup and the bread, but it is also meditation on the Word and now with prayer incorporated into it. Just like any earthly relationship we might have, they will not grow without intentional communication. Our relationship with our Heavenly Father is the same way. Unless we are intentionally communicating messages back and forth with Him, our love for Him will not grow and develop. Fourth, we need to remember that love is not always a feeling. All of us, when we fall in love, we feel that sense of joy when we're in the company of our significant other. But for those of us who've been married for any length of time, we will tell you that there are days when that joy does not seem like it's there and you do not feel like you are in love. In fact, that sense of joy sometimes feels like it got traded for a sense of aggravation or frustration or even anger. It's in those moments that your love is truly tested because even though you don't feel like it, you still choose to love that person and you still choose to be with that person. Our relationship with God is the same way. There's times when we read the book of Job, we learn that even the best of believers will have moments where they don't feel like God is near them, but 
When we choose God in those moments, that really reflects our faith and the depth of our love for him. Fifth and finally, we need to have a little patience. We have to remember that this does not happen overnight. And like any earthly relationship, growing in love takes time. So give yourself a little grace and a little forgiveness and trust what the Lord says in Philippians chapter one. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you, now it's here that I wanna point out who started the good work and notice who finishes the good work as well. So again, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Did you catch when that would happen? At the day of Jesus Christ. In other words, this is a lifelong thing. And even though he's not changing, we are humans and we are changing. And that means that we will constantly be developing and moving and growing in this love that we have for him, just like we would in any earthly relationship. So with that said, I love you, Impact. Hope you're having a great week. God bless you richly.